Hello, and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Wednesday, October the 3rd. My name's Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal, where I've commented on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these daily market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies that you can implement in your own portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios, and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. Having that out of the way, let's get this on. Uh, pretty quiet day, really, today. We got a, a German and uh, a couple of bank holidays across the pond. Uh, we did get some economic data today in the form of PMI, which is Purchasing Managers Index, but this is uh, the ones that are going to be a little bit more widely looked at. Spanish PMI uh, came in a little bit higher than expected. Manufacturing PMI came in uh, in Switzerland a little bit higher than expected. Italian manufacturing PMI came in slightly higher than expected at 51 versus the 50.2. Uh, French manufacturing PMI still below that 50 line in the sand and uh, we got the final European manufacturing PMI came in slightly better than expected at 52.6 and German final manufacturing PMI came in at 54.3 right in line with expectation. One thing to note about all of those PMI numbers across the pond was that they came in above 50 aside from the French. Uh, so that shows expansion in the overall economy, but right in line with what was expected. Here in the United States, we got final manufacturing PMI came in at 51.5, uh, a tenth of a percent higher than what was expected. We also got the IM, ISM, Institute for Supply Management Manufacturing number, which is the, the big number for the PMI. Whenever you hear the Institute for Supply Management, that is the one that is the most widely looked at and the biggest market mover, if you will. And like I said, it came in at 51.5, expected at 50.4, so higher than expected there, and showing expansion because it's above 50. One thing that we did see also was in the ISM manufacturing prices paid. That was lower than expected at 53, uh, was expected 53.5. So a bit of a pullback on those prices, not seeing any inflation anywhere there. We also got construction spending came in at negative 0.7%, was expected to be higher by 0.3%. So that was uh, a bit of a wet blanket on the ISM numbers looking pretty good across the board. Uh, then we got the crude oil chart right here. As you can see, crude oil came up and testing uh, that 48, uh, uh, 48.78 area, broke above that Fibonacci uh, resistance level right now it's the going to act as resistance right now but uh, pulled back below that uh, you can see it acted as resistance before it settled below or above it and then came back down I'm looking for that to actually hold on to uh, the gains there or hold hold on as a resistance then we got uh, gold here continuing to slide I still foresee it to stay kind of stuck in this range right here. We're going to have to see if it can break below this support level. But right now, uh, gold futures down just $3 on the day, but uh, continuing that slide that we've seen for the, for the past week and a half or so. Bonds finding support right here at the 38 uh, FIB level. Uh, it's kind of getting repelled away from that. I don't really see bonds going too much further. Uh, just because I don't really see the interest rates going uh, that much uh, higher. Remember, higher interest rates is going to push the bonds down and lower interest rates, the buy bonds will start to rise. And then we got the Dow Jones Industrial Average down about 78 points right now, but very much an inside day and really just toggling back and forth between the nine day moving average and the 50 day moving average. Don't expect to see a whole lot today just because of all the bank holidays, just, and it's a Monday, it's gonna be pretty quiet. Another inside day here for the NASDAQ, down 22 points on the day, but really pretty quiet. Not too long ago, the E-mini S&Ps were just making newer lows. Uh, E-mini S&Ps, this is the daily chart, down 11 points on the day, but um, 
really still an inside day as you can see this candle is still inside of the other one this is what i was talking about you know we're into a new candle here but uh we just made new lows uh in the last half an hour um but a uh, double bottom there looking like it's showing pretty good support but definitely an inside day down 11 points uh on the day i know a couple of trades that i've done so uh merck does have earnings coming out after uh after this expiration cycle it's they come out on the 25th so i went short term there's 18 days left in the uh october ex, uh, october option series so decided to just put a uh, strangle around it um, just to keep it inside of there there's not a whole lot of decay uh left in this so i'm gonna it's gonna be looking like a pretty quick in and out hopefully and in Merck I did the October uh, 60 uh, 60 puts with the 64 and a half calls just to kind of keep it inside of that area it's been in a pretty tight range so I look for it to stay there and I collected a dollar and 11 cents for that trade there then on to the next trade that I did Disney uh, I did Disney. We talked about this on Friday about the poor man's covered put webinar and decided to go with the one that I had vetted uh, for that webinar and it was dizzy and I went into the April of 17. So that's the longer duration one. That's to create the synthetic long in the stock with like an embedded put in there. I go into all of those details in the webinar. So go to protraderstrategies.com and sign up for that. But it was the April and I bought the 80 calls in there and then sold the November 97 and a half calls to kind of help pay for some of that extrinsic value that I talk about in that webinar. And I paid $13.39 for that trade. So uh, looking for uh, Disney to push a little bit higher and I'm going to be writing this one out through those uh, earnings in the uh, in November so keep your eye out for that I'll be talking about how I'm managing that trade and what I'm looking for uh, going forward all right so go to protraderstrategies.com sign up for that webinar uh, that we did on Friday for the poor man's covered put it's a great one especially if you have a smaller account and don't want to lay out a lot of money for those uh, underlines. This is a great way to save on some of that money, uh, use a lot less margin. And then Friday, we're gonna be doing one on the poor man's covered put, which is just the opposite of that. It's gonna be a way to add some short deltas to our portfolio and limit our risk on that. Whereas with the synthetic ones, if you were around for those, those were uh, unlimited risk to the upside and the downside, this is limited risk to the upside and limited risk to the downside so it's great for some of the newer traders that don't want to have a lot of risk in their portfolio it's a lot less risky than if you go out there and just buy stocks all right so if you can't take that take it easy